Hello and welcome to my Bitwig Spectral Suite second look sound design video. So since I published my first look video, there's been a slight change in the way Spectral Suite has been handled. In particular, it's now included with the upgrade plan and with the purchase of Bitwig 4.4. So that basically means all users with the current version of Bitwig now have access to the Spectral Suite. So I thought that meant that it's probably worth taking a second look at this. As I mentioned in my previous video, my intent here is probably more along the lines of sound design, though this can be used for other means, and I guess I'll explain a little bit what I mean about that. The spectral decomposition process and reconstruction process definitely colours the sound to an extent, and this coloration to me means, unless you like the way that sounds specifically, you're probably not going to use this for mastering. Where you definitely can use this is mix. That's to say it gives you a lot of flexibility in editing synthesized sounds as well as acoustic sounds. But for me, I think most of what I'm going to be doing is much more in terms of sound design. And that is sound design to augment synthesized sounds or sound design when modifying sounds which are already constructed or sampled or layered or already composed. And I'd say that's one of the strengths of this suite. It gives you a way of decomposing a sound into musically meaningful components and processing those separately. So what I've done today is I've made myself a patch already, and I'm going to walk through that patch and I'm going to demonstrate how I've used the sex spectral suite and in what capacity. So the first component to look at here is this um, note grid. So the note grid um, I won't go into in great detail, but it's not tremendously complicated. I've got three parts going here. All of them are structured the same way. This is generating probabilistically notes from, in this case, the C minor scale of varying velocities. And the gate timing is also varied. Then I have an equivalent path with different probabilities an octave down and another path with different probabilities an octave up. So that's generating MIDI and that MIDI is being fed into this patch. So let me unmute. So this next patch is a preset. So I didn't design this, I just went and found it. Um, does it say what it's called here? It's called Base One, very original. <laughs> I changed the release, I changed the decay and the sustain just to make it a little more suitable for what I wanted to do. So what is it that I wanted to do here? Well, what I wanted was to make a patch which generated some sort of rhythm, but a harmonic rhythmic element, starting from something relatively simplistic. So listening to this, you can hear it plays something a bit like chords, But these are not always three notes in unison. Sometimes it's one note, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three, depending on the probabilities. The next step in my processing, I was interested in seeing how the frequency split could be used as a stereo widener. So what I do here is I reduce the width to zero. So this is just mixing the stereo signal down to mono. Fairly easy. I decided it wasn't really very colorful. So next in the signal chain is a saturator. So this is adding a little bit of drive. So this is introducing a few more harmonics. This is introducing a little bit of distortion. But now to the first part that's actually um, spectral. So what I've done here is I've got a loudness split. Note that when you solo one of these, the mix still applies, so we can hear some of the dry signal through. Another thing you may have noticed that when I'm using this, often I will mute the parts rather than soloing. The reason I do that is when you solo, if you move this, when you release, it goes back again, or um, it removes the solo. So that's not actually what I want to do here. So instead, I usually just mute the parts. So this is the loud part. So you can hear 
Firstly, this is quite a sparse sequence, but not that much comes through in the loud and in the quiet. And let's put the mix back. So you can see I brought the middle part of it down a bit, I brought the quiet part up a bit, and I left the loud part where it was. This is because I really want to pick out some of the higher frequency elements, which tend to be in the quieter elements, and add some sharpness and brittleness and to accentuate the transient here. And this is a bass sound, has a cleaner body and a slightly rougher transient. On the subject of transients, my next processing is transient split. So let's solo. So you can hear that the, the decay I put quite long on this, maybe I'll turn it down a little. So you can hear a relatively short transient element. And the body is quite clean. Overall we have a little bit of grit. I quite like the sound, but notice it's really accentuating that punch at the beginning. The next of the spectral effects here is the frequency split. This is the most interesting part of what I've done, so let's take a closer look. What I've done is I've split into 24 pieces and I've got a randomize, which is note synchronized, and that is moving the nudge and the spin. So effectively what that means is, these 24 bands are randomly being positioned anywhere across the spectrum, every time a note is played. The reason that I've done this is because often what happens is, band one sounds like the lowest frequency, band 2 sounds higher, 3 sounds higher, 4 sounds higher. I didn't want that relationship, I wanted a bit more randomness. And all that's happening here is, note the cut positions are different in each band, but so is the length of the delay, and so is the amount of feedback. So this is the first band, the second band, Notice this, these delays are completely wet, meaning none of the dry signal is included here, so this would only play the delayed sound. The reason you can hear the original sound is because this mix is not to 100%. So you can also hear that the delays themselves are quite long. Listen to this fourth delay. They're so long because they're tempo synced, but my BPM set to 45. So, all of them together. So at this point I decided that I quite like it, but it sounds a little bit too quiet. So I wanted to bring it up a little bit more, but not just turn the volume up. So what I did is I compressed it. You can see that the compression is not super strong, there's only a small amount of it. I'm also increasing the volume here. So note that I used the tool to bring this to mono. So now I wanted a way to bring it back to stereo. So to bring it back to stereo, what I've done is I've split the spectrum into 32 parts. No modulation or randomization going on here. But I've panned these elements alternately left and right, and I've adjusted the volume, and I adjusted the volume just by ear here. So we have an interesting rhythmic delay generating a beat, all the way starting from this relatively basic uh, note grid patch. On the master, um, I just had a touch more compression and a little bit of limiting, so that's all that's been going on there. 
but I also have a send which has been muted, and this is a convolutional reverb. I've mentioned it before, but this is one of the things that I've really enjoyed in the, um, I think it was, was it 4.3 perhaps that came with this? So it has a whole family of different convolutional uh, impulse responses that are available for you, or you can import your own, and they really give beautiful space. So I'm gonna bring it in. And I think that's the patch complete. This is obviously a self-playing patch, I guess you might call it generative. It's relying on the spectral suite to generate a lot of the timbre that's going on here and the convolutional reverb to add some space. Obviously this is not a complete musical element, but I could see using this as the foundation for a broader piece of music. So let me turn this down a little bit so I can speak freely. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode. I think um, there's a lot further to go for me in terms of using the Spectral Suite for sound design, and I've got a lot more to explore, but I'm already quite excited by it. As I said, I have a project that I'm going to use this on, and I really hope to dig deeper and get a greater understanding of how I can really utilize this for subtle and not so subtle sound design elements. But in any case, I'd like to finish by saying thank you all very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>